morning, let us join together in prayer. God, we love you and we thank you for this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you and we are welcoming you into this house of praise and prayer for all people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As it says in, uh, I think it's Psalm 104, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord, be right and able. <laughs>
uh, in the jar. If you on Facebook would like a jar, just let me know and I'll make sure you get one, whether I deliver it or mail it or whatever. I would be glad to do that. So just take take a, take a hint from all of us. It is an amazing thing when we practice spiritual principles. So there's that. Of course, we need help on Wednesdays and on Sundays. Welcome back, Kendra. I think, welcome back, Carter. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Kendra is back from her surgery, her emergency surgery, so we're glad to have her back. Even though she's tired. She's moving uh, a little slow. She's moving, moving a little, little slow. slow. But that's all right. She's here. And so we are very blessed by that. And Patrick, welcome. We are glad you're visiting from Utah uh, today. And, uh, so God bless you as you worship with us today. Um, if you need, if you would like to help us on Wednesdays, you can see Greg or myself, and we'll make sure that you get to work. I know that we are short this week, especially. Um, so if you can help this week, especially, uh, we would really appreciate that because there's a few of us that cannot be here due to extenuating circumstances. So God bless you. Uh, as and Lewis, Lewis uh, is always looking for folks. Uh, so. As you notice, that spot over there is empty today. If you'll notice, when we pan back over to Lewis, there's no worship teacher today, it's, uh, except for except for Mr. Rick, the drummer boy. We're so glad to have you. And it makes, it makes uh, all the difference in the world, really, trust me. And so it's it's just us, so we expect all of you to sing and worship with us, okay? Yes. All right, God bless us as we move to prayers with Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Today's Prayers of the People is submitted by Scott Hill. Oh God, our resurrection and life. The promise of your new life in Christ is like a breath of fresh air in a dry and thirsty land. We have gathered as believers and as those who are honestly seeking the truth. Guide our worship this hour. Oh God, who makes all things new, speak to us as whole people today. May your truth touch not just our intellects, but also our deeper yearnings of heart and soul. We bring with us our daily concerns, as well as our more eternal questions. May your new creation in us shed light upon our everyday walk. O oh God, who speaks truth, allows us to walk peacefully with others and build them up. Teach us to replace our anger and bitterness with love and and by intimidators of you. O God, who fed the multitudes with but a few loaves and some fish, feed us now with the abundance of what you freely offer, that we might overflow with your goodness right where we live. All this we pray in the name of and because of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Amen. Hashtag prayers of the people. And if you have a special prayer request, please reach out to our Valley Ministries care team at vmcareteam at gmail.com. Thank you. All right. Please rise as you're able. We're going to sing the song that Edgar wrote. I put it in the music for a few years ago. Here in the Valley. Thank you. 
sacrifice himself. And one day he's coming back. Glorious day. Stealing, rather let them labor and work on. 
honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is a need. So that when your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be in imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and as a sacrifice to God. May God add a blessing to our reading and you may be seated. So that part of the scripture, being imitated of Christ, um, spoke to me. And I was thinking, what can I say that has something to do with that? Talks about that. And, you know, last week I sang this song I had sung for 35, 40 years. It didn't go so well. It's, it's between you and me. I'll be honest. So here's a song I've never sung before. But I'd heard it on the radio. If you hear this in a K-level, I'm sure you've heard it too. Zach was saying, less like me. And it spoke to me. So I listened to it. Asked Rick, Rick, would you play this with me? So here it goes. Less like me.
appreciate you so much. And uh, especially when there's just nobody here, if you're here. Uh, like nobody to back you up to sing. And, and I know it's not always easy. We know. But just, you know, God bless our worship leader.
So, let me ask you. What truth do you need to tell yourself today? What truth do you need to tell yourself? Maybe there's something that you need to do that you haven't done. Maybe there's something that you have done that you shouldn't do. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Community, yes. That's telling the truth. And maybe there's things that we need to be telling our truth about, about ourselves, instead of trying to point out everybody else's character defect. Woo, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Tell the truth. Secondly, I hope that we can reflect on your life and not let anger ruin good judgment. Or when you hold anger against someone or something, that anger is allowing the devil to have a foothold in your space. Anger can ruin our lives. Amen? I know that we all get angry at some times. We just do. That's a, an emotion. Anger is an emotion. And, however, we can't let anger destroy everything because it will. Anger can lead to rage if it's unchecked and it goes unhinged. There are some helpful things that you can do as a person of faith to deal with your anger. Forgive. <laughs> Forgive. Seek help from outside people, a therapist, a pastor, some, somebody that can help you get it in check. Forgive. Practice. Go through it. The scripture says, be angry, but don't sin. Right? So, get it out. You know, if you need to go to the boxing ring, <coughs> talk to Marcia, man. She can set you up, right? <coughs> <coughs> Get it out in a healthy way, not in a bad way. Anger can also, saints, it can also move us toward doing the work that we maybe need to do, but, but we haven't done yet. So healthy anger can move us. You know, I get so mad at myself sometimes. Oh, my goodness gracious. And I, you know, I know better. <laughs> I know better. And yet I still do it. Because I feel like Paul sometimes. I know better, but I still go ahead and do it. But anger unchecked is not healthy. Anger unchecked is not healthy. In some highly sentimental versions of the Christian faith, it is thought that any type of anger is sin. But Paul surprises us here by recognizing anger has its place. He also says that it has its limits. Even those with a superficial knowledge of the Bible know that the book is really acquainted with anger. If you read the Bible, you'll see. Jesus was upset when he turned over the tables of the money changers in the temple. And when he encountered almost any form of self-righteousness, it didn't make him very happy. And Paul himself was furious with the Galatian church in chapter 3 as it fell back into the way of the law. Uh, or into, uh, it, it, instead, of, instead of loving God first, they put the letter of the law first. Jesus came to fulfill the law with love. Amen. 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 Indeed, God may be slow to anger, but this does not mean God's never angry, in my opinion. I believe God gets upset when God's people turn to idolatry. I've heard it said that love is always outraged at betrayal. I think that's really powerful. Love is always outraged at betrayal. We must, we must be careful. Paul warns the Ephesians not to let the sun go down on their anger. He recognized that anger can quickly become obsessive. Instead of being upset over your thoughtlessness, 
words or deeds. We have a tendency to make being upset personal. It's about, it becomes personal. We nurse a grudge, amen? We cook up schemes of revenge. Yeah, I heard that too. <laughs> Once we have slipped into this realm, we have opened the door. The well-being of others and community then becomes secondary to the main purpose of simply to get even. Thus, Paul reminds us of the need to forgive. Does that sound familiar? Practice forgiveness. Oh, I can hear it now. I can hear it now. I can hear it now when people say, oh, pastor, you just don't know. Well, you know what? I don't need to know because God does. Hallelujah. God already knows the antidote to anger and his forgiveness. So reflect with me, what do you need to forgive so that you can move forward? What do you need to forgive so that you can move forward? The third thing, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Hold on to your seats. This powerful thing we hear about grieving the Holy Spirit what I, I think we, we, we miss it sometimes because it is so powerful. When the Holy Spirit is so powerful. Paul says in Ephesians that the Spirit has sealed us with the promise of Christ, given access to the Creator God, and provided us with this inner power to sustain a life of faith. We're given inner power to sustain a life of faith. This seal, this bond of the Spirit is unbreakable. Did you know that? The, the seal of the Spirit is unbreakable. Yeah, right. The power of the Holy Spirit, unbreakable. You cannot face anything in your life that God hasn't already come across. You cannot go through something that the Holy Spirit isn't equipped to help you deal with it. The seal of the Holy Spirit. You know, in the old days, the kings would have the scribes write their letter on their little stationary thing, and then they would take this wax and put their seal in it and stamp it on the letter to make it be official. We don't need no stinking wax seal to make us official. God has already sealed us. Hallelujah. God has sealed us. God has sealed you with the Holy Spirit. It's in you. It's divine right here, right now. And so why would we want to grieve the Holy Spirit? We are sealed. Now God has sealed us for eternity. And even more than that, God has sealed us for the ministry that we must do right here, right now, today. We often grieve the Spirit. Listen, when we sit idly by and do nothing, I'm preaching to somebody this morning. We often grieve the Holy Spirit when we make excuses for our lack of integrity. We often grieve the Holy Spirit when we don't answer our calling. We often grieve the Holy Spirit when we don't use our gifts that God has given to us. We often grieve the Holy Spirit when we gossip and we put other people down. I believe we are grieving the Holy Spirit when we don't help others. God's called us to help other people. Now listen, we may even grieve, be grieving the Holy Spirit if we're not getting vaccinated because it seems to me that the answer to helping us overcome COVID is the vaccine. Now this is not a political statement, but it is a statement about science. It is a statement about us helping other people. Isn't that what we're called to do? Yeah. Isn't that what we're called to do, is help other people? I know I might push some push some people's buttons on this, but I believe firmly in this. That we are to help other people and not sit idly by and do nothing. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. 
Number four. The fourth thing that we're called to do is to live in love. Live in love. The text concludes with this ultimate ex exhortation to be imitators, as God spoke to Lewis's heart about the imita being imitators of God. You know, and, and, and we talked about this as well on Thursday night. You know, we're, we're human beings. We're not God. So it's really hard for us sometimes to get it. But we can practice the ways of Christ. Christ's ways were loving, kind, compassionate, mercy, and all of those things. We can do that. Does it take effort? Yes. 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 It does. We had an incident here on Wednesday where we had a, a person who I've spoke about before who has some mental health challenges. And her and another homeless guest came to our back door, and we have some resources back there. Well, they took some of those resources without asking. One of our first people saw them down the street and said, you guys need to come back. Oh, pastor said, <laughs> I would be, if somebody says that to you, you better, have, you better really pay attention. Pastor said, <laughs> right? So one of them came back, and it's, this woman is, um, you know, is, um, has some problems. But we must treat her with respect, which we did. We came, she came back, she gave back the things that she took. The other woman, <laughs> so we prayed for her. <laughs> and that's part of the loving expression. What I told her was, why would you steal from a place that's giving you what you ask for. If you need a blanket, and we have it, you can have it. If you need a pair of socks, and we have it, you can have it. If you need some food, and we have it, you can have it. You can, you, if we have something to give you, we will give it. Amen? Amen. We will give it. Mm -hmm. Tears roll down her cheek. She understood what I was saying. She understood, and yet there was compassion with the, the extension of Christ and love to respect another human being. Did we beat her up? No, we did not. Did we give her food? Yes, we did. Did we give her the blankets? Yes, we did. That is the love of Christ. That is the love and the compassion when you're dealing with human beings. Because who doesn't make a mistake once in a while? And maybe she didn't know any better. And so it is important. There's this word called agape. It's, it's, it, it's a Greek word, and it, it's unconditional love. When you agape somebody, when you love somebody with that kind of love, it's not phileo, the brotherly love, or anything like that. It's agape. It's all-encompassing love. It's love that goes beyond what you're capable of even. Because, you know, my natural instinct was to get upset. <laughs> but you see, God, if you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, and you're not grieving the Holy Spirit, then you can act out in a compassionate way, even if it's not your nature. <laughs> Amen? Even if it's not your nature. Love is so important. And you know, sometimes I think when I see a commercial, I'll see, you know, I see uh, commercials for uh, lots of things. And they look, these, these people, they look all glamorous. And every hair is in place. And that they're makeup on, and all that stuff. You know, that's, that's what the world tells you is, is about, you know, you need to be lovable like that. Well, you know, you got to love me just the way I am, amen? Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to love you just the way you are. You don't need to put on airs. You don't need to pretend to be somebody you're not. God has created us all in God's own image. And God is big enough for all of us. Amen. 
for all of us. I'm not saying we shouldn't present the best self that we can present. I'm not saying that. But I'm, not, I'm, but I'm also not saying you have to be perfect for God to love you. We have to learn to this kind of love. I want to close with this little story about a man who came to, to a church, not this church, a man who came to church and he got in and he sat down and somebody came up, you're in my seat. So he got up and moved. You're in my seat. So he got up and he moved. Nobody else acknowledged him, nobody talked to him, nobody said anything else. So he thought after church, well, I'm going to just go down here to the local bar. I'm going to go down to the bar. We walked in the bar. Hey, how you doing? There's a seat over here if you want to come and sit. Somebody talked to him. Somebody gave him a seat. Somebody offered him a drink. Which would we be like? Are we like that church? Or are we like the bar? See, we have to practice love. Love of the people that are different than us. Love of the people that, that don't walk the same walk that we walk. We need to agape. 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 The people in whom God puts upon our path. And when we do that, when we do that, oh, there's so much power. There's so much power there. And it encourages me to know that we can do that. Saints, we can do that. Can't we? Yes. We can do that. We, I want us to reflect on how we extend love to others who are different. That we share the love. Speak the truth in love. Don't let anger run your life. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And practice agape love. May God's power cover you as you reflect on how to do these practices so that you can be stronger in the presence of a loving and powerful God who loves you beyond what you can either think or imagine. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. So I invite you this morning to give unto God and we thank I, I just am so so thankful. I had a clergy meeting this last week with some other fellow clergy folks and you know as pastors Oh, we just are, all of us have this feeling of struggle and of, of um, wanting to connect with all of you and wanting to be able to be the best pastors that we know how to be, even though sometimes we don't know what to do, <laughs> you know, with this whole thing. And so with our offering, I just, I, I, I just continue to thank you. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for your faithfulness, for those of you who are on a pledge, uh, continue to give uh, your pledges, and for you, for those of you who give uh, when, when you can, what you can, you know, it's an awesome thing as we resource the, 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 the gifts that God has given us. And so I want to say thank you as we receive these gifts of tithes and offerings, and we bless them and ask God to use them in a mighty way in which God has already preordained in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of us here in the sanctuary, for those of you at home, I invite you to prepare your communion. And um, Marsha, could you bring Kathleen to communion? She yeah. has it. Oh, does she have one? Okay, I didn't know. I didn't see it. Does anybody else need communion? Okay, good. You guys are on it. So as I said in the message,
message. Maybe there's some things that you've done that you shouldn't have done. Maybe there's some things that God's calling you to do that you, you need to do. So this is the time that you get to reflect and offer those things back up to God. So I invite you to take a moment in silent reflection. We thank you, God, that we can confess our shortcomings, our sins to you, that you are faithful and just. The Psalms tells us that you forgive us our sins as far as the east is from the west. So we thank you for that, and we receive your love and forgiveness now in all that is holy. Amen. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, Jesus took bread, lifting it to God, asking God's blessing upon it. And then he broke it, and he gave it to those that were gathered and said, My friends, I want you to take this, for this is my body, which is given to you. And in a like manner, he took the cup, lifting it to God, asking God's blessing upon it. And then he gave it to those, and he said, take this, drink this, drink this, for this is my love. This is the agape love that I give to each one of you. And when you do this, remember me. I invite us to receive our communion. I will receive this for those who could not be with us, and I will receive this juice for those who continue to believe the lie that God does not love them. Many blessings, God. We thank you for the many blessings. We thank you for reminding us that your grace is free, that your love is free. All we have to do is receive. We thank you in Jesus' name. All right. Please rise for our chorus. Closing chorus. Keep you. Our worship has ended. Let our service begin. Amen.